Hey everyone and welcome to the second episode of our Selenium series and in this video we are going to see the differences between implicit weight to explicit weight. Now previously we understood that in order to be as much as efficient as we can we need to not overweight for some elements to be appeared on our web page. So that's why learning about the differences when to use explicit weight and implicit weight is going to be what you need to be as much as efficient as you can when you develop some online bots or writing some test cases. And by the way, if you will enjoy the content of this video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and as well as leaving your personal feedback down in the comment section so we can reach more people. Let's get started. Alright, so before we go ahead and compare those kind of weights, then let's clear some important points about the implicitly weight. Now, till that point, we know that this is much more efficient rather than typing in time.sleep because not always we'd like to wait 30 seconds before we find an element by ID, for example. But there is one piece of information that we should know about the implicitly weight. It is going to be set up as a timeout across all your Selenium project. So what that means, it means that you only need to call this implicitly weight method one time and then it will go ahead and set an implicit weight amount for all the elements that you are going to try to find it in the future. So for example, I might go down here and say something like my second element and I can make that to be equal to driver.find element by id and i'm going to put here some element that is not even existing in the page in the left side so i can say something like let's just write something randomly and then i can basically try to execute our program and just for testing reasons let me decrease this to eight seconds so we won't really wait 30 seconds before we see this program being crashed okay so if we run this one more time then let's see the results. So as you can see, we have no problem with the first element, but in about a second or two, we should receive an error that the Selenium was not able to identify an element with this ID in here. So that's actually an important point to remember because once we set the implicitly weight, it is going to be basically applied across all the elements that we are going to try to find them somehow in the future. Alright, so now that we completely understood the behavior of implicitly weight, let's go forward with our automation. So now as a next step, it could have been nice to identify if the download has been completed successfully. And we understood that to indicate something like this, we need to understand when this text in here is going to be exactly equal to complete with an explanation mark. So. Let's try to write an automation like that. So I'm going to select everything in here and try to click on inspect. And let me do this one more time because it did not really point to it. Okay, so we can see that this complete with an explanation mark is coming from this HTML element, which says us that its type is div and it has the class of progress label. Now, till this point, we did not really identify a specific HTML element by its class name. And there's actually a great way that we can do that by, again, using a method with the prefix of find element. So let's see how we can do that. So let me delete this line actually, and I will stick with that one. So I can say something like progress element is equal to driver dot find element and then I can select a method that is called by class name. So we can identify an element by its class name. So it is a great idea to select that. And I only need to now pass in the class value. So it will be progress dash label as we saw earlier. Now for those that are confusing what are classes in the web world, it is basically a reference to a styling method, unlike with Python, which is referring to classes where we use it for object oriented programming. So I just wanted to make sure that we don't confuse between the meanings of class in the web. And now that I have this, then I can go to a new line and I can say here something like print and I can use a formatted string and I can try to basically print the text of this element. So it will be by dot 
text and it should display us the text in here. So if we do that and run this one more time, let's test the results of that. Okay, so we have a new page being appeared. And as you can see, it immediately showed the text of this element, which was starting download. Now, showing up the text immediately is actually not a great idea because we probably like to wait some time until we see the complete. But there is actually not a nice way to do this with the approaches that we have learned till this point. So we need to use another utility. And for that, there is something that exists in Selenium, which is called explicit wait. Now with this, we can actually allow our program to wait for an expected condition. And then we can basically wait until this condition returns true. So what that means, it means that we look to this true expression in here. So I can say here completed with the explanation mark. And in our case, if we don't wait in a smart way, then we will always receive false with that. So we need to figure out how we can wait till this condition is true. And let's go ahead and see how we can do that. All right, so in order to use the explicit wait, we need to import some several secondary libraries that is inside the Selenium. So we are going to say up top here, something like from selenium.webdriver dot common dot buy import buy like that and we are also going to import two more things in here so it will be from selenium dot web driver dot support dot ui like that we need to import the built-in class inside this selenium that is called web driver wait and we'd also like to import one final thing, which is going to be selenium.webdriver.support import expected conditions as EC both capitalized like that. Now I know that it was a lot of info that we have used as import, but there's actually a great reason for that and we will see why just in a minute. So now I will go down here and I will start writing the condition that we'd like to wait for. Now in order to start with that, then first I will instantiate the web driver wait class. So I will say web driver wait and I will instantiate that without assigning it to a variable. And at first we need to pass in the driver object so we will just say here driver and now we like to specify the amount of seconds that we should wait until the expected condition is true or not. So I'm going to say here something like 30 seconds again and that should be enough and then I'm going to automatically launch the method of until in here. Now by convention, the info that is written inside this until method is usually in a separated line. So I'm going to press enter in here. And then we need to write the condition that we want it to be true at some time. And in our case, it is after 30 seconds approximately. So we can say here E C, which stands for expected condition that we have used as import in here. And we can now use a method that says text to be present in element. So as we can understand, this method is designed basically to wait until the text has the expected text. And I'm going to launch up this method in here and again, press enter. So again, I'm just writing the arguments just in a separated line. Now this method expects for two important arguments as the first one being the element that we'd like to check the condition on. And the second one being the text that we expect to have after 30 seconds. So I will just comment here those down. So I will say here element filtration and as the second one we will say the expected text like that. All right, so the way that we are going to identify the element that we'd like to check is by using the by class. Now, this is just another approach finding elements in a web page. So it is not going to look complex. So it is as easy as saying here something like, so I will just create a tuple in here and then I will start my filtration. So we'd like to find this again by class name and as you can see we have auto completion for that so i can just use class name like that 
and the second piece of information right near of it should be the class name value so it will be progress dash label exactly like before so this entire expression is just another way to find an element in a web page unlike using the find element by class name method and i just realized that i did not delete those two lines that we don't need so let's go ahead and do that and then in the second line right after we say comma we are going to write the expected text so it is going to be complete with an explanation mark so now if we run our program then we should not receive any errors because this condition is probably going to return us true in less than 30 seconds so if we run our automation now and wait for the results so again we click on this download button and let's see just in a second what will happen Alright, so we got the text of complete and if we go back to our program, then you can see that the program finished successfully. So what that means, it means that we were able to write a nice automation until we have waited that really verifies that the download of some file has been completed successfully. So it is very nice to play around between those wait methods. We can use implicitly wait to find elements in our entire page and we can also also use the explicit wait which is the more custom waiting so it means that we need to use it if we want the execution to wait for some time until some condition is achieved now for everyone that are interested to know what are the expected conditions that you can use you can do that by basically seeing all the options in here so if we delete everything from here and use dot again and you can see that we have a lot of options that we can use expected condition for so you can see that we have element to be clickable element to be selected and basically wait for new window is opened so as you can see there are tons of options that you can use if you'd like to wait until some expected condition is achieved so it is very nice feature by selenium that we can always use to write more dynamic bots and as well as writing more efficient test cases all right so i really hope that you have enjoyed this episode and i really hope to see you in the next one as well because we are going to discuss about how we can fill in forms with selenium so it is going to be exciting to see how we can automate processes like login register and stuff like that and that will be it so be sure to hit the thumbs up button and as well as subscribing to my channel and click the bell notification so you can be aware from my future uploads i will see you very soon